Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. Go follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney in case you don't get to any of your questions during the live Q&A. But we'll start today with some more Cowboys rumors, and as has been the theme for the past, I guess it's been about a week here, let's talk about Zeke Elliott and what's going on on that front. Could there be charges brought against Zeke? I'm only going to give this one just the one star but there is at least a possibility of it. So here's what's going on. The the victim in, in the uh, pushing incident out in Vegas, Kyle Johnson, who actually is, is a uh, random Orange Coast College football player. I've never heard of that school in my entire life. I don't think anyone really has. Says he didn't want to press charges because he didn't want to make a gut reaction. But in an interview he did with a CBS LA station, he said he's still considering charges mostly because he didn't like Zeke's apology and that he didn't feel it was sincere and there was no eye contact, blah, blah, blah. In the end, I don't think charges are going to get pressed here. Here's what I think is actually going on, reading between the lines here a little bit. John's made the comment that, that he looked up to Zeke. Look, Zeke can make this go away real quick. Sign some stuff. Fly him out for a game, something like that. Boom, no charges. And if there's one thing that Zeke should have learned beyond just, you know, make sure you're making good decisions and all that, in terms of the way you handle stuff after accusations... Don't anger the victim in this case. The big thing with what happened with Zeke and in and, and, and the domestic violence case, or I should say non-case, the suspension, was that the victim pushed hard and cooperated with the NFL. If there's no cooperation with the NFL, there's going to be no punishment. So if you're Zeke, make things right here. And again, I don't think there's going to be any charges brought about this case, frankly. There's little evidence, I think, from what we saw on tape that was really worthy of true charges there. I, I don't know what that would be. Like, yeah, he fell into a railing. O okay. Shouldn't be a big deal, but we know how the NFL works. So if you're Zeke and the Cowboys, you can make this go away pretty quickly. That's the route I would go if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, and Zeke in particular. Now, there is, of course, the bigger picture as it relates to the on-the-field side of it. Could the NFL come down hard on Zeke? I'm going to give this one two stars. I continue to think this remains a fear, and some out there will say, oh, nope, nothing to see here, and it's almost kind of like, oh, do you guys remember the scene in um, the Naked Gun movie uh, where the police chief is sitting there with, with, the, with the explosion on behind him and says, there's nothing to see here, you know, go about your business? I kind of think that's the Cowboys right now. Like they're saying there's nothing to see here, but we know how NFL and with the way Roger Goodell handles discipline. It's always a wild card. Who knows what Goodell feels like? If he wants to bring down, drop the hammer, there's literally nothing stopping him. That's what happened the first time around. Zeke appealed for the injunction, and the NFL, when they went to the court, the court said, you know what? Too bad. NFL can do literally whatever they want. Now, Bleacher Report's Mike Freeman, who's very soft on Twitter, by the way, uh, says that some around the NFL think Goodell could try to teach Zeke a lesson again. He already has one strike from the NFL, and with Jerry Jones saying, hey, we don't think that there's anything there, Goodell might not like that. It's a little early, I think, for the NFL to do that there. So, I'll keep asking this question to you, and I'm curious to see how it changes, because in the past week, I've seen it steadily rise in terms of the response. How worried are you about Zeke's latest off-the-field incident. I, again, am going to stick in that three to four range, but it's always going to kind of be there. Again, this should not be worthy of a suspension. Reuben Foster got nothing. Zeke shouldn't get anything either. But we know that the NFL is not consistent with their punishments. That means it's always going to be there as a, hey, this could maybe actually happen. So I am always going to be worried about it until we get the NFL saying, hey, there is going to be no suspension confirmed. We're, we're just going to let this go and you know wag our finger at Zeke and say, hey, make better decisions, which is what it should be. As what, that's what the conversation should be. But I'm always going to be at least just a little bit worried about it. I do see many of threes and fours, by the way, right now in the comments section. All right, let's talk injuries here as we continue to have some bad news today. Not, not the way you want to start the, the end of May. Is Fr Kavon Frazier going to miss time? Four stars this one. Not actual season time, but preseason time as Frazier had his knee scoped last week. He's out for a few weeks, and there is a chance that he ends up missing Cowboys minicamp. The good news is he should return in time for training camp. Now, this is noteworthy because Frazier isn't just battling for a starting spot, which is a bit unlikely. He's really battling for a roster spot right now. Look what the Cowboys have at strong safety. Of course, Saverwood is going to make this roster. Jeff Heath is going to make it too. So that leaves, I think, two spots safety. I, I have a tough time seeing Dallas going five deep at safety here. So George Loka battling for a spot and a starting spot. Frazier and Wilson. Frazier being out 
only helps George Iloka and Donovan Wilson, who are entering their first season with the Dallas Cowboys. They got to learn the playbook and everything else there. So for the Cowboys, that's key in terms of Frazier missing time. That helps Wilson, helps Iloka, and of course, hurts Frazier. So I ask you this question. Will Kavon Frazier make the Cowboys roster? As of right now, even with the knee injury, I think he has a leg up on Don Wilson. But both players, similar in terms of where they were drafted, that, that sixth round range. Maybe Wilson is someone the Cowboys like more. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. All right, next up on our rumors here, should we worry about Cheeto's health? I'm going to give this one two stars. A friend of the show, Katie Drummond, had a good article on Cowboys Wire. He is missing part of OJ's with a hip flexor. And one note on this, by the way, Jason Garrett said yesterday it was a hamstring. Garrett later said he misspoke. It's actually a hip flexor that, that Cheeto's been dealing with, which I think is actually a good thing because the hamstring has been an issue in the past for Cheeto. He dealt with it a bunch in his first year and then missed week 17 of last year with an ankle injury. So I am not going to panic about it. But I do worry just a little bit. I think there is some reason to have at least back of your mind concerns. It's not like you're panicking saying, oh man, he's never going to be healthy. It's more of a, when there are a bunch of little injuries, those tend to add up. I think the best example across the NFL is actually Todd Gurley. Go back to his time at Georgia. There was always something that, that banged up Todd Gurley. Now he's got some significant knee injuries. I don't think we're at the, that you know, range for Cheeto, but it is worth mentioning. Now for the Cowboys, they're going to be fine. It's OTAs. He knows the scheme, whatever. It's not a big deal if a player of Cheeto's status misses OTAs. His roster spot is secured. Yeah, he's going to have to play a little more catch up there. It's not a big deal. Meanwhile, Byron Jones also out. What that means is, if you want to spin it a little bit, it's actually good news for the Cowboys. It means that Jordan Lewis gets more reps, and I love him because he should be playing more. It means Michael Jackson gets more reps. It means Donovan Alumba, Chris Westry all get more playing time. In the long run, that's actually probably better for the Cowboys because those younger players need some more ramp-up time in terms of Jackson, Alumba, and, and, and Westry. Maybe one of them impresses, and maybe that's good news for the Cowboys in the long term there. So again, not great for Shido to be banged up, but there is at least a little bit of, of a bright side there. We'll stick with our defensive back talks now. How about Jeff Heath over George Aloka? I'll give this one two stars. Yes, this is the case right now, and Clarence still had a good point about that being the case right now in OTAs. But I want to remind everyone, and I'll keep making this point, it is okay to react to OTAs. Let's not overreact, though. Let's not pretend that Jeff Heath starting over George Aloka in May means he's going to be the starter in September. And in general, players that are new to a roster typically work behind players who have been on the roster for several years. So yes, Aloka is going to push Heath for the starting role. I will not be surprised regardless of who wins that job. It's a true training camp battle there. But George doesn't have a great feel for the defense quite yet. That takes reps and time. So yeah, you probably do want to start Heath as the strong safety one and let Iloka be the, the number two strong safety. And maybe that'll change as we go along. And I think that very well could happen. But it's a point I've made before in previous s segments here. Iloka is not guaranteed a roster spot. That's not the way his contract is set up. And if Heath is the starter, well then maybe you'd rather just take Donovan Wilson. And maybe you want him to be your number three, your number four safety, and stick with Kevon Frazier. Now, I would probably still take Iloka anyway because he's so cheap. So again, we're not going to overreact to OTAs here. We're just going to react to them. And hopefully we can get that difference down there as I already see plenty of questions coming in about possible overreactions to OTAs, which I get that. We want football badly, and we're kind of grasping at straws here. So speaking of strong safety, who should be the starter? Give me an I for Iloka, H for Heath, O for other. Now that that could mean Donovan Wilson, could mean Kevon Frazier, or even Eric Berry for those of you that still want him out there. But let me know what you guys think there in the comments section. One last rumor here for you guys, then we'll get to some Q&A. Is Kellen Moore making any changes? I'll give this one three stars because I don't want to imply that it's a totally brand new scheme. But yes, there are some changes here. We've seen a couple of those during the early portion of the media open OTAs. There have been those tweaks there. And I think they are positive tweaks in terms of what the Cowboys are doing differently under Kellen Moore. Two big things we've seen so far. Number one, there is more pre-snap motion. I like that a lot. That's good for the Cowboys. We saw how effective the Rams were with it against the Cowboys in the playoffs. And the red zone offense, which was 
just trash last year looked a little bit different too. In particular, the Cowboys busted out some 10 personnel, i.e. one back and four receivers, which I would also love to see. As weird as it sounds, video game football actually has some translatable abilities as it relates to real football. Namely, if you spread the defense out, it is easier to run. Now, we'll go back to you know mid, mid offseason in here. My concepts I wanted to see for the Cowboys offense. More pre-snap motion. Check that one. All of the play action. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see until that one, I think, really in the season, by the way. More crossing routes. We'll wait and see. Spread the defense. We've seen that early in OTAs. And use Dax legs in the red zone. Kellen Moore himself said that was a key thing for him. I like the way we're trending under Kellen Moore. Of course, it's OTA, so we'll react to it, not overreact. So describe how you feel about Kellen Moore as the OC in one word. Let me know in the comments section. I'll use mine here. Hopeful or even optimistic. I still have some doubts. It's a first-year OC. I think that's reasonable. But there are some, some things we've seen early in some comments that at least are the things I want to see out there. So we'll see how things actually look in the regular season. Again, it's OTAs. It's about installing right now. Really, some general install overall. So I'm not going to overreact, but optimistic is, is my word there for Kellen Moore. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.